In this video, we'll be looking at the structure of the brain and also how different parts of the brain actually work. So first of all, we'll start with the major part, obviously, is the cerebrum. So we say that the cerebrum is basically what you naturally see the brain as. So you can see that there are two cerebral hemispheres, the left and the right. Now, what we're, not, what, what we're gonna do here is to think about the general function of the cerebrum and not going into the specific uh, parts of the brain. So uh, specific parts of the cerebrum, like the frontal lobe or whatever, but generally looking at what the function would be like. So the cerebrum can actually have multiple things, but one of the key ones that we know is that it controls our voluntary actions or our consciousness. Uh, and other things it could also control would be things like memory. So the fact that we can remember stuff is because of the cerebrum. Uh, it also controls our learning abilities. Uh, personality is actually another key one. And conscious thoughts would be also uh, sort of our voluntary actions. So the fact that you want to eat something or if you want to go play a game, uh, all of those conscious thoughts are controlled by the cerebrum. So for example, if someone ha has got into an accident and they've lost their memory, for example, then it's perhaps the specific part of the cerebrum that has been damaged that affected their memory. Or there are cases where people wake up from an accident and just completely change their personality. And again, it's because of uh, an effect on the cerebrum as well. Another one that we'll look at is the cerebellum. The cerebellum actually is more about the muscular control uh, of our movement, so the posture and balance. Now we say that um, the cerebellum obviously works very closely with the cerebrum to, uh, to have a full or better control of our motions. So the cerebellum can actually work together with the cerebrum to control our body. So sometimes the fact that you would naturally, if you're about to, just about to tip over, the cerebellum kicks into, into place and then it would start to balance yourself and then your cerebrum would kind of, you would voluntarily move your body um, and also send a signal to it to better, to know what you need to do next to better balance yourself, for example. Next, we've got this particular part, which is the medulla oblongata. Now, you would come across multiple different structures in the body that also has the name medulla, because medulla tend to means, uh, tends to mean the middle or the in inner layer of it. So for example, you can have the medulla in the kidneys as well. So it's very, very important when you talk about the structure of the brain, when you're referring to this particular part, you need to, say, you need to call it medulla oblongata for, you, uh, for your answer to be very clear you're talking about the brain and not something else. So the medulla oblongata has a particular role in terms of autonomic control. We've mentioned this in another video about the how our nervous system is uh, organized. Autonomic means a subconscious control. Uh, so these are things like, for example, our heart rate is subconscious. Our body just naturally does it for us. Uh, and also ventilation, the fact that we are breathing. Obviously, you can think, well, surely I can also control my breathing, right? I can hold my breath. And that's an example of how we can actually work uh, how the different parts of the brain can work together to help us uh, control our body. But the thing is, you can't hold your breath forever and eventually your, uh, when you're starting to run out of breath, your medulla oblongata would then signal your lungs or your muscles around your uh, lungs to actually force you to breathe in again. So it's all autonomic control. We can't, you cannot physically or mentally try to stop your heart from beating or stop you from breathing completely. So that's not possible. So that's all because of the medulla oblongata. So for someone who has an accident and damaged their medulla oblongata, that's a pretty bad thing because that means the heart rate and ventilation will not be, uh, will not actually be controlled. Next, uh, just above the medulla oblongata here, we've got the hypothalamus. Now the hypothalamus has a very uh, key function. We often talk about in homeostasis. So uh, in terms of homeostasis, it's literally about the control of our internal environment. Uh, keeping it stable. So these are things like, for example, they can uh, monitor our blood composition. So for example, our blood glucose level. Uh, it can also signal the pituitary gland, which we'll talk about in a second, uh, to produce hormones as well. And hypothalamus themselves can also produce hormones. So it's all about the control of our internal environment, either by signaling a nervous impulse or signaling through hormones. Another key thing uh, which kind of links very much to homeostasis is that uh, subconscious control. So actually we say hypothalamus is the main control of our autonomic nervous system. And we say that the, uh, the 
the way that the hypothalamus works is that they actually have, we can split them up into two different centers as well. We can have the sympathetic center and the parasympathetic center. And as I mentioned previously, it's all about uh, the different states of your of your body. So either you are in a stressful situation or a relaxing situation, your hypothalamus will be able to detect that and uh, coordinate the necessary uh, changes in the body. It could just controls more complex behavior, so things like feeding or aggression, depending on the state that you are in. So this is the hypothalamus, which controls our, our autonomic nervous system, depending on the state of our of our body or the state of our environment, to have to bring about and coordinate more complex behavior, uh, and sometimes they can also be involved in homeostasis as well. Then finally, we've got this little part here, which is uh, next to the hypothalamus, and this is the pituitary gland. Now, you may have come across the pituitary gland many times before, especially in GCSE, because it is very much involved in the hormonal coordination. So, uh, the, in the pituitary gland, there will be two parts. There's the anterior one and the posterior one. So the anterior one is the one in the front. So A is the beginning, so the first letter. So it's, it's the front part of the pituitary gland, which can releases its own hormones. So things like FSH, which controls our menstrual cycle. And then the back part of the pituitary gland, which is the posterior one, it's uh, closer to the hypothalamus, meaning that it can store and release any hormones that's made by the hypothalamus. So they'll be moved to the back, the posterior, posterior pituitary gland, to be released as well. And these are things like ADH, which is a hormone that is going to travel to the kidney to control the amount of water that is reabsorbed by the kidneys. So this is the structure of the brain. There are five major sections. So you've got the cerebrum, which is the main part of the brain um, that controls voluntary actions, personality, memories, and learning, etc. Then we've got this part, which is the cerebellum, which coordinates our muscular movement. And it can very much work with the cerebrum to control how we move. Then we've got the medulla oblongata here, which is uh, responsible for autonomic uh, responses. So things like uh, controls our heart rate and ventilation rate. Then we've got the hypothalamus, which is this part here, and it has a major role in homeostasis and other autonomic controls. And it coordinates basically how our body responds to different uh, situations. So uh, depending on if we're at a stressful situation, then they would give out a sympathetic response. Or if we're relaxing or digesting food, for example, it would have a parasympathetic response. Then finally, we've got the pituitary gland. The anterior one, the front part of it, can produce hormones uh, on its own to do homeostasis, for example. Then the posterior part, which connects uh, to the hypothalamus, basically releases hormones that is made by the hypothalamus. So the pituitary gland is very much having a homeostatic uh, function to it as well, but it's more heavily involved in the hormonal response. So this is the structure of the brain.